Okay, this section is part four on chemical kinetics, reactions, equilibrium, and so forth. Remember, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button. Don't get upset that I'm going too fast. I'm trying to reduce the size of these videos. So I expect that you will hit the pause bu button here periodically so you can read everything that's written on the screen. All right, collision theory. Occlusion theory says that particles collide with each other and they make new products if they have the right orientation and enough energy. It's kind of like playing billiards or pool. If you hit the ball, the cue ball, the white one, um, in the right or on the right angle and with the right amount of speed or force, then you, you may end up producing um, a desired result where you, what you want to happen will happen. But if you're off slightly, if the angle's off a little bit or if it doesn't connect with the other balls in the right position, or if it has too much energy or not enough, then you may not end up sinking the balls in the corner that you want. All right, number 26, identify the parts of the curve uh, over here. So energy is this axis. This is the reaction progress, so over time, time's going by. We're going to the right, and this is energy, how much energy we have. So we start off with C. Let's just kind of go out of order here. C is the energy of the reactants. How much energy do they have to begin with? And D, or I'm sorry, E over here is the reactants, or is the, let me start over. C is the energy that the reactants have, and E is the energy that the products have. Okay, so reactants over here, products over here. So if you look real quickly, you can see that reactants has more energy than products. So that means some heat is given away, some heat is lost. So these guys are gonna be giving off heat and D is the amount of energy released in the reaction. If the flip side happened, if the flip side happened and we had reactants here, then we go up a little curve and then we finish up here, then this is your reactants, this is your products. Products are higher, then that means uh, heat is absorbed as opposed to lost. Okay, so we can look and see what, what the overall change in heat is by the position of the product line compared to the reactants. All right, B. B is like that hill. Remember we talked about putting an energy, rolling a ball up the hill, but once you get the ball to the top of the hill, then it can roll down on its own. So how much energy do you need to put in to begin with? That's our, what we call our activation energy. So that's over here, activation energy. All the energy we need to get the uh, reactants in the right position and with enough energy so they could start colliding and start producing the product. Then the reaction happens on its own. And I already mentioned D is the amount of energy lost and E is the energy of the products. Okay. 27 talks about four factors that affect the speed or rate, how quickly a chemical reaction happens, and then explain why each affects the reactions. Temperature. Increasing temp increases the motion of the particles, how fast they're moving. That increases the number of collisions made, and then that'll obviously increase the number of products that are formed, or how quickly they're formed. More collisions, more uh, products that are formed. Concentration. Well, if you have more particles, concentrations talk about particles, if you have more particles, then you have more collisions. And if you have more collisions, you make more products. So if we increase concentration, you'll see the reaction uh, time speed up. If you reduce the concentration, it slows down. Particle size. If you have smaller particles, if you grind up maybe a big sugar cube into small little pieces, then you have more surface area. More surface area means more collisions can occur on the surface. And then you produce more products when you have more collisions. And finally, a catalyst. A catalyst is actually going to lower the activation energy of a reaction, making it easier for the reaction to occur because you don't need as much energy to get the reaction going. So remember we talked about the ball, pushing the ball up to the top of this hill? What if I made a nice little tunnel through the hill over here? And you only needed to push the ball up that far and then you could push it right through the tunnel and then it could drop down. You don't need as much energy to get the reaction going because you don't have to push the ball as high. So that would be the work of a catalyst, building a tunnel like that or in chemical terms, lowering the activation energy. So we might look at a curve that has a reaction taking place without a catalyst, and then a reaction taking place with the catalyst. So the reaction with the catalyst is always lower, or at least the, uh, the curve is lower, because you don't need as much energy to get the reactants to start reacting and producing products. 28. 
It says consider the reactants or the reaction, which is an exothermic, which is an exothermic reaction, and at equilibrium. So we've got a reaction here. It's an exothermic reaction, so it's going to give off heat. So consider that as one of your products. Then it says, what does it mean for a reaction to be reversible? Well, it means, and you see by this double arrow over here, that it can go this way and then it can go the other way. So it can keep going back and forth, kind of like a seesaw, depending on what the conditions are. So the first problem, number 29, says what happens if you decrease the concentration of N? So we've got our seesaw, and imagine taking a nice even seesaw, and you take away something over here. This side gets lower. We take away some N. We decrease the concentration of N. If this side gets lower, now we're going to end up with an imbalance. This side's going to be higher. So the reaction's going to say, well, let's get back to this equilibrium. Let's go this way and let's produce more of this N2. So let's reverse the reaction and go in this direction, produce more N2 to get it back up to where it should be. Now, the, number 30, it says if we decrease the temperature, this is an exothermic reaction. So if we take heat away, this is kind of like a chicken producing eggs. If you keep taking the eggs away, the chicken's going to keep producing more. So we're dealing with the heat over here. If we have a nice normal balanced equation and then all of a sudden we take something away, now we're in this situation. We have less heat over here. So the reaction is going to say, well, we need to produce more heat. We need to keep going this way to produce more and more heat so it can go back up and back to this level position. So always ask yourself, what is there less of if something's being reduced or taken away? What is there less of? And the reaction is going to point towards that reaction or that side, whatever there's less of, to bring it back up to equilibrium. So the reaction will run t in the direction where there's less of something. The flip side, if there's more of something, if we have a nice level reaction and all of a sudden one side goes higher, Let's say this side we, we put more in, like more uh, reactants to start a reaction. If we end up in this situation, the reaction is going to say, well, that's not a good thing. We don't want to have an imbalance. We don't want to have more of this than this. So let's keep going in this direction to make more product so that this will eventually come back down again. So it's always trying to even it back out. Okay, just keep thinking seesaw when you come to these types of uh, problems.